Today we're going to continue our discussion about materials engineering and how important it is in the role of creating new objects and to take science and apply it to solve real world problems. And we're specifically going to talk about something that's I had a lot of hype, but nanotechnology. And remember when we talked about materials engineering, we said that a lot of times the discovery is made and it's a while before it's, you see it as products. And the more innovative discovery, the longer this time takes. And if there was ever a case, it is with nanotechnology. And it's looking at the very small. All right. So we're going to talk about what is technology, how does it work, examples of nanotechnology, the future of nanotechnology, some examples of it, buckyballs, carbon na and nanotubules, and uh, graphene is something that's pretty amazing. And we'll look at some other applications of nanotechnology. Um, let's get a sense of small. Um, there are, in one centimeter, 10 millimeters. A nanometer, which is what we're talking about, is 1 million millimeters, is a nanometer, to give you an idea. Well, what does that really tell you? Um, and that kind of gives you the visible light world right there. But let's talk about it in terms of um, critters. An ant is five millimeters. And so that gives you an idea of, okay, that's five millimeters. So I give you a head of a pin is one to two millimeters. All right. And then when you see the little U, it looks like the little U. That is a nanometer. Is it my, all right. Uh, excuse, excuse me, one micrometer. And then as we start to get into uh, micrometer, which is um, 1,000 nanometers or 0.1 millimeter. So it keeps getting smaller and smaller, and I'm butchering that terribly. But when we start getting into nanometers, we're getting the space of atoms here. You can see that right down here. The atoms of silicon are 0 0.078 nanometers apart. Um, a buckyball is roughly one nanometer, which is kind of hard to get a sense of that. There's a nanometer, you know, tubule is um, 1.3 nanometers. So you get a sense of how very, very small nanometers are. We're talking in the atomic scale, and that's really the important thing to think about. It's very, very small. All right. And it's 10 if a million, uh, think of it this way, a micrometer is 10 to the 6, 10 to the negative 6 meters, or 1,000, 1 one thousandths of a micrometer, a millimeter is a micrometer. A nanometer is a thousand times smaller than that. That will help you see it. And if you're seeing this, this is the visible light span in which we can see frequency of light. But if you look at it, so if we're saying then if, if, if an ant is five millimeters and then a red blood cell is approximately seven to eight micrometers, which would be about one thousandth of the size of that ant. And then we even go a thousand times smaller than that and you get nanometers, the things that are very, very tiny. Um, Richard Feynman's famous presentation, there's plenty of room at the bottom back in 59. We asked, why can't we manipulate materials atom by atom? He said, why can't we control the synthesis of individual molecules? Why can't we write all of human knowledge on the head of the pen? And why can't we build machines to accomplish those? He said this in 1959, and you know, more than 50 years later, a little beyond 50, we're moving towards that. One, and what is nanotechnology by the people that make it? It's, it's the understanding and control of matter at dimensions of roughly 1 to 100 nanometers, where unique phenomena enable novel applications and companies seeing nanoscale science, engineering, and technology. Nanotechnology involves imagining, measuring, modeling, and manipulating matter at a length of scale, which is a big mouthful right there. But it's 1 to 100 nanometers, and we said that was approximately, looking at our scale here, one nanometer, one to the tenth, you know, so zero, 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 a lot of zeros out there. Um, that's a million, that's a billionth of a millimeter, okay? 
Now, and again, another thing, but really all you're trying to do is get something in there very small, and we're going to control and uh, measure it and make machines out of it. Something we should also say, it's not even just simply the size, is materials behave differently at this very tiny size. So when we discover nanotechnology, it is as if the periodic table, which you've heard about, our elements are there. It was like because the same matter, say gold, at normal size that we would traditionally look at has certain properties. But if you make it get to the nanometer size, it starts behaving differently. Okay, and this is where we get to it. Materials can have different properties at the nanoscale. So the same material can be different. It might be better at conducting electricity or heat. They could be stronger, different magnetic properties, reflect light better, change color. And so larger surface area, there's so more surfaces available for interacting with other materials. It's got a larger surface area. We know that the ancients were messing with basically nanotechnology. If you remember when we were doing ancient engineering, the, the goblets that when you put light on them change colors. They were taking gold and silver, silver grinding it up to the nanoscale and dropping it in there and the properties of the, those materials when you hit it with light changed it. All right. Today we use an antibacterial wound dressings. We, we um, use it to, as a dry powder to neutralize gas and liquid toxins and chemical spills. We're trying to use it to develop better batteries. We see it in sunscreens. Scratch and wear resistance in eyeglasses and windows and car mirrors. So they use it in glass. They also, uh, in Home Depot, you can get materials that you dip your gloves into and it makes it so water will not attach to the gloves at all. So you can take the muddiest gooey puddle, stick your glove into the mu mu muddy go gooey puddle, and you'll pull the glove out and it'll remain white because nothing will attach to it. All right. This video... At the 32 minute, whoops, let me go back up, 32, come on, sorry about this, uh, nanotechnologies, this video at https colon right here, YouTube slash watch, type that in and you will see a great video, oh that's just great, sorry that my mouse is jumping all over the place. At this video, you'll see a great, great 20-minute video or so on nanotechnology. And really take some time to watch through that. And the very small. It goes into great depth. Let's look at some examples of a buckyball. Think about it. 60 carbon atoms arranged in 20 hexagons. It kind of looks like a, sh a shape of a soccer ball. But if a soccer ball is 22 centimeters in, in diameter or 220 millimeters, this is a billionth, 22 times, 20, you know, 220 billion times smaller or 10 septillion. It's tiny, but it recognizes this shape. It's very, very strong. We're trying to use it in electrical devices. We looked at it for drug delivery, excuse me, tiny environmental sensors, light detectors, surface coatings to improve wear resistance. But again, you've got to be able to manufacture it, and that's the problem. They're trying to use it. They've thought of all these clever ways to use it, and hopefully by now you've seen the video on delivering medicines and things, that video I just pointed out to you. Um, please, if you haven't watched it, please go ahead and watch it right now. So... So what is a nano carbon nanotubule? It's graphene. And remember when we talked a little bit about materials engineering, literally scientists at the beginning of the 2000s were looking at graphene, and they started taking it apart, a little, little piece of tape, tape, tape. And it took them a while, but they got to a layer of graphene, and they decided to test its materials. And that's when they made this unbelievable discovery. It's extremely strong, extremely conductive, it's an amazing thing. And if they take it and they take graphene and they roll it into a tube, that's what you get. You know, this graphene is as stiff as a diamond, very high tensile strength, so you can pull and pull and you're not going to break it. 
strongest, most flexible molecular material out there, can be metallic or a semiconductor, so you can use it to conduct it or control conductive, and very high current capacity. There's really some thoughts that this will help us make computing stay up with Moore's Law, the idea that computing power is going to increase every 18 months. You know, but if you're going to work with something really still small, you as an engineer have to be able to manufacture it. So we're going to have tools to work with that. And one of those tools is scanning electron microscope. And, you know, it's very, allows us to look at things, very tiny things, in really no other way in scanning electrical microscope. It can look at small things, far away things, and all these things that are invisible to the naked eye. All right. And so you can see it right up here, T lymphocyte. We have a video, but I'm going to go ahead and skip on that. All right. And then they have atomic force microscopes, if you can believe this. At the nanoscale, the, they basically gather informa information gathered by feeling the surface with a mechanic, mechanical probe. All right, and what it does is you've got a laser. You, here's your sample surface right here. And using a photodiode, which measures a light diode, which we can measure, and a cantilever tip, we can run right over that. And you get unbelievable resolution with these. And this was equipment that honestly wasn't available 15 years ago. So you start to see as an engineer, you have to make things to be able to work with these materials. It's one thing to find graphene and say, oh, it has all these amazing properties. But if nobody else can get it, nobody else can work with it, it really doesn't do us a lot of good. And remember, silicon that we use in all our chips, it was 100 years before they were able to use it. So if this is, you know, a ruler caliper, caliper, excuse me, allows us to see with our eyes, and then an optical microscope allows us to see at the millimeter size, at the so a one thousandth of a meter. At the micrometer, at a million, we use electron microscope, and a nanometer we use at atomic force microscope. So the atomic force is what we're going to be using with nanometers. Also, and if you go to um, different universities, you're always going to see these clean rooms. You cannot have any dirt. Everything has to be cleaned off. That's why these the technicians are wearing there are wearing gloves, hooded, booties. Uh, they do all these things to keep everything immaculate. Any dust or dirt would ruin the silicon, make impurities. And a regular just at the... Um, you know, electron microscope level, at the micrometer level, at the nanometer, nanometer level, you can imagine it has to be even a much, much cleaner. All right. Now, what do we think they're going to be trying to use? All right. They're going to be using everything from diodes and transistors, capacitors, displays. We're all they're thinking we're going to be using in electronics. Haven't gotten out there still as fast as they would. You know, some of the thoughts is composites, you know, body armor, spacesuits, self-healing materials are all things that have been researched. The problem is we can make them, but can we make them cost effectively? So the answer to this is yes. Was nanotechnology changing things? Certainly. And we're seeing some of the natural nanotechnology. If you made the um, robotic hand out of that nanowire, that wire that changes shape when we run a current through it. That is some nanotechnology that was made with that. Have we gotten the killer application for nanotechnology? Uh, not yet, I don't think. It may be coming there, but as of right now, there is not one. But the future's bright, and you've got to keep investigating it. All right. And we're really excited about biomedical drug delivery, drug delivery I should say, because that could pass in the cells. Uh, DNA sequencing, artificial muscles. We talked about that with that little wired muscle you're doing. Bone replacement. They put insert into the bone um, scaffolding, if you would, to help replace it. Uh, there's some thought we can do bionic eyes. We can make all these sensors. We can make the sensors very, very tiny. Uh, imagine a world 
that these sensors are like dust. They're floating through the air. They all have their own IP address, which is on the internet is like an address. Uh, we have made, there's enough addresses out there right now in case you're wondering, well, man, if everything's got an IP address, aren't we gonna run out of space? Well, there's enough addresses out there to put an IP address 13 times over with every um, atom in the on Earth. So we got endless IP addresses. Um, clean, less expensive source, high efficiency and durable. We think we're trying to do with that water filtration. Again, these are all ideas that they're trying to do it. Anytime you have better coatings, you're going to see that. You're going to see somebody's wearing all the time. The problem, of course, is you start dumping this stuff in the atmosphere, the weather, the environment. You know, you're really going to have to test it to feel out what kind of impact it might be. Uh, there's always unintended consequences. Uh, some people are using now their soaps that you um, that are a little abrasive. And what they have is they have little balls in the soap, and you rub them on your skin. It makes you feel better. It feels really good. Problem is when that soap goes into down your wash down, excuse me, down your um, drain in your shower it gets in the water system the fish eat it and it really negatively impacts the fish now the people that make that soap had no intent to hurt fish but that's the kind of issue we get into we don't know what this stuff will do once it gets out there unless we study it um honestly you're seeing all kinds of nanotechnology even in flights and you know if you can make something stronger and lighter, well, it's going to perform better. It'll go farther on fuel. It'll be farther on weight. Um, again, these are all things that are coming out. Some forms of them are out there, but there is not, and I want to be clear on this, and there's no nanotechnology killer app out yet, but it's uh, only coming. And, and, and I really want to stress that, that as what makes nanotechnology so incredibly interesting is if imagine when you look at the element table out there and I wish I had a slide with the element table on here I would show you it but remember it's got the different parts on it here in fact I'm going to go ahead and show this hang on one second let me drop over here element table all right Here's the periodic table. And if you see right here, I've just got it. So, right, you know, you look up the element and it goes up to, I think it was a 118 these days or whatever they found, fake ones, or new, are not, not fake ones, excuse me, but they've just discovered them and they last a very short time. Now imagine if I could lay the same sheet of colors right here. I took another copy of that periodic element table and laid it on top of this. And when I laid it on top, it was elements that are nanoscale size. What you would find is they would have different properties. So you've just automatically expanded the periodic table. And you could probably make four or five copies, lay them all on top of each other. And what you would see is, so you've got this copy and then another copy on top, another copy. As you get down and tinier and tinier and tinier nanoscale, there will be different properties. There are certain materials that if you put them in glass tubes, you hit them with light. And if all you do is change the size of the elements, uh, the colors change, which is amazing. So they have different, the way they handle light changes as it gets smaller and smaller. So it's almost as if there's 118 members of the element uh, periodic table. When we discover nanotechnology, it's as if we have five times that many. So we have nearly, you know, nearly 600 new elements out there, or 600 elements, 500 new ones. And that, or 600 new ones, excuse me, five times 120, or close to 120. Five times 120 is 600. So it's almost as if we have 600 new elements because this same element here at normal size that we're used to, um, let me go over here and find it. There's silver, right? Then, and there's gold, as silver gets smaller and smaller, it takes on new properties. And we're only just beginning to understand it. We don't even have all the tools we need to manufacture and work with it. Okay? All right. 
And so, in summary, I hope you took 20 minutes to watch that video. And if you haven't, please do that before you watch anymore. All right. Nanotechnology is an enabling technology that will impact. And that's a fancy word of saying it's a game changer. When will it start? We see the killer app. The When people really start using it all the time, it takes a while. But you've got electronics and computing we think are going to be thinking. I think materials engineering is already going to be a really big deal. Um, energy and environment, pros and cons on that because now we're introducing materials that normally don't exist very often in the environment out there. We'll do it in great quantities. Health and medicine is pretty exciting. Um, if we can get, uh, recently there was a um, mention of using nanotechnology to deliver uh, medicine into your skull, about in your brain. You have a brain blood barrier. Nanotechnology, we can make it so small, we can deliver it in there. Uh, another strategy with cancer is we put gold particles in there and then we warm up the gold particles by either um, using magnets, uh, using microwaves, and uh, maybe killing the cancer cell there. You know, I think, again, um, these are all in theory, and they have trials, and they'll test it on one or few, uh, a very few number of times and say, hey, we have proof of concept. It's a long way from proof of concept to reality. And for in terms of national security, yes, we can use it in our military and do a lot of very interesting things. We're exploring that in a big way. Space exploration, you know, if we can build suits that can help us there. Uh, builds better spaceships, etc. It's just a lot more materials engineering. All right. Um, at this point, this is what we have on nanotechnology. Make sure you've watched the video. Thank you very much.